Hey, welcome back. Let's get into the next point, uh, which is okay. Uh, even as I keep teaching, feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Okay, even those who are online, uh, just say I have a question, and then you can, or you can just type it as well. So, I don't don't stop yourself from asking questions. Just feel free to ask any questions. Okay, next one. Loyalty is essential. Be faithful. Uh, Proverbs three. Three and four. Anyone can read Proverbs three, three and four. Never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. Tie them around your neck. Write them on your heart. If you do this, both God and people will be pleased with you. Look at this. This is Solomon writing. No, he's saying, "Don't let go of loyalty and faithfulness." Interesting, no? Solomon is not saying don't let go of uh, the money you made. He's saying loyalty and faithfulness. Tie them around your neck. That means wherever you go, have these two attributes: loyalty and faithfulness. What is loyalty? To be loyal means to commit to serve the vision, the purpose of an organization. Right? Now, loyalty can change over seasons. So, for example, You've joined a company, right? And uh, you've been working in this or company for organization for maybe five years, and now you feel you get a better opportunity in a different organization, maybe uh, with a bigger role, right? Uh, a higher role. Now, there is nothing wrong in moving, right? There's nothing wrong in saying, okay, here I was a team leader. This other company, after five years, I'm applying as a manager, and you know they're okay with everything, and so they've given me the offer letter. So I'm moving from team leader to a manager from another company. Now, doesn't that is nothing wrong in that? It doesn't mean that you're not faithful to the organization, right? As long as you are in an organization, you'll be faithful there. Right now, God can take us to many places. Right, He can take us from one company to another. We use our wisdom. We move companies as well. Now, it's all right, right, uh, for better roles, better uh, packages. All of that is okay. But wherever you are, be loyal and be faithful. Now, I, I cannot say, cannot move to another company organization, and I say, hey, you know what? The previous organization that I worked for had these rules, so I will follow that rules. They will say you go back to your old organization. Why? Because this organization has different rules, different vision, different purpose. So we got to align ourselves to that vision, right? So be loyal, be faithful. And when you look at loyalty, you know loyalty is something that is uh, the fruit of loyalty is not always immediate. Right, uh, loyalty is shown after many years. We begin to taste the fruit of loyalty only after many years. Right now, now that could be in a corporate organization. It can also be in ministry. Right? Of course, God can immediately put somebody in, uh, you know, as a make somebody as a pastor and all of that. But normally, loyalty is something that is, uh, you know, it, it, the fruit is seen after years. Right? Why? Because nowadays loyalty is not easily found. Right? See, you can say, okay, I am not for um, LGBTQ. Right? Gay and lesbian uh, marriages and all of that. After two weeks, we can change our mind. You can say, no, no, I, it's okay. God said it's fine. In Romans chapter one, they did it, so it's fine. What is that being disloyal, right? Loyalty is to stay true to an organization and their beliefs as long as you're there in it, right? It's not like you're, you know, you're staying. Oh, I will never leave this company for the rest of my life. Only then, no. As I said, you know, God can take us through transition. Let me give you this example of loyalty, right? There's this wonderful this organization and uh, uh, this man. It is an international organization right now. <clears throat> I don't know name the organization, uh, uh, but 
this guy I, i think most of you may know uh, was a college student right um he had this idea of having an online uh you know buying and selling of goods now in the early 90s that was foolishness what do we know get up take your vehicle go to the shop buy what you want and bring it back home simple as that but he said this to few of his friends maybe about 10 15 people he said it to them they said uh, in that meeting that 15 people five people left they said this is not making any sense 10 people stayed so he started this organization and during the course of time they people didn't see any fruit uh, it's just a waste of time doing all of this about 3 4 people left so now there were about five or six people in that five six people three of them said no i don't want this uh, it's it's I've, i've been here for too long i'm not seeing any benefit i need to move out i need to go i know i want to start my own and they left there were two people who stayed back okay because this 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 man who started the company said if you stay with me right just hold on maybe 10 20 years down the line you are sorted we will go we will become a global company the whole world will use us where are they sitting in a room like this small room right he's saying this but so in the end two people stayed now they are multi millionaires multi millionaires now how did they become multi millionaires they didn't do anything it's not their idea it is not their strategy nothing they did what he is saying i'm doing he said don't go stay do this do this do this i'm doing it they were loyal to this man and to the organization today they are multi millionaires now what am i trying to say <clears throat> loyalty will always bear fruit right when we are loyal god will begin to you know use us make us more fruitful okay next one be accountable at all times even when you are not asked for oh let's read this this was here in luke 12 42 to 48 be accountable even when you are not asked for It's a big uh, portion. Let's read it, but Luke chapter twelve, verse forty-two. The Lord answered, "Who then is the faithful and wise servant? He the one that his master will put in charge to run the household and give the other servants their share of the food at the proper time. How happy that servant is if his master finds him doing his doing this when he comes home." indeed i tell you the master will put the servant in charge of all his property but if the servant says to himself that his master is taking a long time to come back and if he begins to beat the other servants both the men and women and eats and drinks and gets drunk then the master will come one day then the servant does not expect when the servant does not expect him and at a time he does not know the master will cut him in pieces and make his share in the fate of the disobedient the servant who knows what his master wants him to do but does not get himself ready and do it will be punished with a heavy whipping but the servant who does not know what his master wants and yet do something for which he deserves a whipping will be punished with a light whipping much is required from a person to whom much is given much more is required from a person to whom much more is given so here remember we have gifts skills and god's grace upon our life but when we get into an organization they are providing us with the time the facilities the infrastructure the material the the people the training everything they are providing us so it is our responsibility to get things done 
you know, we have something called as deadlines, right? So by this date, these things must be done. So when an organization or, or as a leader, right, or maybe your manager or a leader will say, get this done by the 20th of this month. I want the file. It has to be done, right? Because it is your gifts and your grace that you've been selected, your skill, you've been selected to the organization. Now, we're not selected in the organization to sit and waste time. Why? Because number one, they're paying us. Two, they are, they're giving us people, resources, time, everything that we need to fulfill all the tasks that has to be done. So we need to be able to get deadlines done. Right? It is number one responsible. Get things done at stipulated times. Being accountable is to use the resources which the organization has given in a rightful manner. Right? Okay. The organization has given me this laptop, so I must be accountable to it. Let's make sure that I look after it, use it the right way, right? maintain it well. It's not. I should not have the attitude of saying, OK, anyways, it's the organization. So I'll, I'll use it however I feel like. That is wrong. I'm not being accountable. Right? So the resources that the organization gives me, I must be accountable. What is they've entrusted it to me? I said, okay, I'm giving you this. Do it, and we must be able to do it, right? Um, now, remember, you have a boss, but your real boss is watching. The boss may not be there. Your yeah, earthly boss, he may be in a different country doing something, but you have. A real God, the boss, he's watching. We'll be accountable to him. I remember this. <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, I, I joined the call center uh, when I was, I think, 18, 18. I wanted to work and I wanted to study. So I joined a call center. It was a regular call center. Seven hours, no, sorry, not seven, eight hours of calls. It was an inbound call center, so calls would come in. I was like probably 18 or 19. Calls would come. And this is a, you know, all about, I think it was credit cards and you know, signing up for credit cards. And they would have problems. So calls would come in. We had one half an hour break and two 15 minute breaks. Right? Monday to Friday, eight hours of login. So nine hours in office, eight hours of login. Right. Now we would come in, we would put the headset. Start your day. There's no talking, nothing. I mean, no talking with the team leaders. You know your time. You come, you log in. You now over time, many of them learn tricks, right? In the while taking calls, so they would say, "Yes, uh, let me just check with my manager, and I'll get back to you. Can I place you on hold? Yes, please. You can place me on hold. They'll be looking here and there. They'll go have tea." <laughs> They'll have coffee, they come. So I used to think, oh man, you know, 10 minute break there is. Oh, thank you, sir, for staying on hold. Apologize for waiting, making you wait. Right? Uh, so it was hard for me to find my manager. Uh, and so we were having a long discussion with my manager. He was having a discussion with the tea fellow outside. I had a discussion with my manager. So your problem can be resolved. 15 minutes break, he's taken off. Right, and I, I saw that. I said, "Hey, even I want to do this once a while." <laughs> yes, sir. Can I place you on hold? <laughs> yeah, please place on hold and go. But over time, after doing it, maybe I think five, six times, there was something in my heart that said, "No, this is not right. Somewhere it's not right. Right? I have to do. I have to be right." I have to do it the right way. And there were people who would, you know, in this uh, these call centers, they had different ways. You know, they would say, uh, every time you a, a, a person makes a payment to the credit card, it's like you've got one point. Uh, you get certain points. Uh, so they would say, ah, this person made the payment. And they would click, OK, payment made. Anyway, only after uh, six, seven months, he'll call back, right? So that's OK. And I'm safe. Payment made, and they would enter it. 
So I used to think, how come everyone else are getting 30, 40 points a day? I'm getting seven, eight points in a day. And then I got to know all of this. I thought, this is very difficult for me. But my manager will say, why is it they are not even, Paul, your English is good. You know how to talk. You know the process. You know everything. Why are you doing this? Why is it that they are doing better than you? They drilled me. And of course, I was very young, so I didn't know, right? I didn't know how to react also. Uh, but I didn't tell them that this is what they are doing. Uh, I said, OK, I'll do, my, I'll do better. I'll try to do better. And I wanted to leave the job. So I thought, better to leave. Uh, but then I just continued on. And a time came. All the data was. So we were taking calls one day. And they called seven or eight of us. Right? Seven, eight of them. He said, uh, they all asked, log out, log out. So everyone logged out and they went to meet the uh, manager. And the manager said, these are the things that have happened. All fraudulent cases. All these are, uh, you know, say, it's saying that they have paid, but there's no payment received. This call, this person has taken this. All of them were fired on the spot. The senior manager, I remember who, uh, my man, my team leader was fired on the spot because he didn't look into it. Now, they what do they need? Team leader. So they looked at the team. Who can be the team leader? I said, I'll be. <laughs> okay, come meet with us. We want to talk to you. English was okay. Skill was good. They saw, is there anything wrong in his... Uh... I said, see, I was able to do 7, 8 because I did it the right way. They are doing 30 and all that because they did it the wrong way. Next week onwards, you're the team leader. <laughs> Right. So, so what I'm trying to say is when we are accountable to God, knowing that God is watching, God will lift us up. God will bring us to higher positions. Right? Be passionate even when your heart is not in it. So get in or get out. <laughs> right? Sometimes you, you know, God will put you in a place. And you feel your heart is not in it. I'll give you this example. I disliked going to hospitals. From the time I was small, I didn't like hospitals. Now I've joined full-time ministry. What is the role I get? Member care. What I should do when people are in the hospital, go and pray for them. You know, there were times when that hospital smell comes, I would feel like, you know, very nauseous. I feel so uneasy. There were times my... Uh, my family members were in the hospital. I would be waiting outside. You all go, come, meet and come. I'm not coming inside. Now I'm, I prayed, God, give me ministry. I want to join ministry. God gave me, but what he's given me? <laughs> hospital visits. Now, I mean, is, am I passionate about it? Not at all. But I knew I had to get passionate about it. I have to do this. Right? It's not about standing in front of the pulpit with the mic. This, this is something I have to do. So what to do? Get somebody along with me. Go. It was very difficult for me. I mean, uh, going into these hospitals, the smell of the hospitals, looking at people, I just didn't like it. But I knew that I, if I have to do ministry, I have to either get in or get out. So Paul, either you get in the hospital or get out of ministry. <laughs> that was my choice. Now, meaning I told myself that, right? So I said, okay, get into the hospital. So was it difficult? Very difficult initially. So there will be times when God has called us to something. You may not be interested in it, but you got to get in. You got to ask God for passion. Lord, help me. It's not my comfort zone. Help me to do it well. And sometimes we may start off in a half hearted uh, effort, but after that half hearted effort, you begin to ask God, God, I want to do better. I want to become better in what I'm doing, right? Uh, if lack of enthusiasm has to do with work environment, mistreating of bosses, office politics, or other related matters, talk this out. Clear the air so that it can be resolved. When you have problems in the work, now, in, especially in, you know, in a corporate sector, there will be problems, bosses and uh, you know, the way things are done, uh, or people talking rudely, 
uh, all of that will be there. Talk it out. Don't lose passion for your work just because two, three people have said things about you. Right? You talk it out. You say, okay, these are the things I was not happy with. Please uh, sort it out. Hit the nail on the head. Don't take the dust and put it under the carpet and keep living with it. Talk it out. Right? So there are times when you look at ministry, there are times we meet with our life group leaders and I talk out. I say, see, uh, thank you. See, they're all serving. Yet we, we talk. We say, see, uh, tell me certain places that we can improve. Uh, what we didn't do well in this year. What we did well in this year. How we can do better. We talk it out. Right? So everything is clear. Right? Nobody has any ill feelings with each other. Right? Um, again, maintain integrity and truthfulness always in all things. Proverbs 10 and verse 9. He who walks with integrity walks securely. But he who perverts his ways will become known. Right? Integrity and truthfulness. What is integrity? In a way that your head is up. Never bending your head. And I would see, uh, if you look at the scriptures, no, you know, most of the prophets, when they when they prophesied in, in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, they all stood up. They, never bent, they walked in such integrity. Imagine Elijah. Go and tell the king it'll rain. Go and tell the king it'll not rain. There was no, uh, you know, there was no, it was not like he was boasting. But he knew, hey, I'm serving a God who's greater than all of this. There's integrity, right? There's honor, there's truthfulness. And when you walk in integrity, people will notice it. Yes or no? But have you seen, you know, you see these leaders, 5 a.m. Now they, they've done everything all their life. Still 5 a.m. they're getting up and going to the gym. They can relax, no? All their life they struggled, now they're all doing well. Why do they have to do this? There's some kind of integrity in their lives that they have placed. And so when we are doing ministry or when we are uh, serving God, when we are in the workplace, walk in integrity. You know certain things are wrong, don't do it. You know certain things are right, do it. You know that people are, everyone else are doing something wrong, don't join them. Don't worry. You may be an outcast. You may feel that, hey, I uh, nobody likes me, nobody is uh, partnering with me, or nobody is my friend. That's okay. Integrity is more important. I can't tell you how many times I have had lunch alone in the workplace. They will not come and sit next to me. They will say, oh, uh, he'll start preaching. Uh, we'll... Alone. And do you think that hurts? Definitely hurts. I'll be very sad. I'll be uh, say, hey, come sit. Yeah, Paul will go and sit that side now. Yeah, sure, carry on. But in one way, I'll tell myself, I belong to Jesus. They rejected Jesus. Will they not reject me? It's there. But you stand for integrity. You stand for the truth. Wherever you are, right? You say, no, this is what God says. This is what I will do. Right? Uh, put away deceitful mouth from your lips. Lying lips are an abomination for the Lord. The integrity of the upright, Proverbs 11.3. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. They may see success immediately. Those who lie, those who cheat their way, they may see success immediately, but it will destroy them. Here it says, the integrity of the upright will guide them. Right? The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. I love the story of uh, Esther. Perfect example, no? Esther, Mordecai, and Haman. What did Haman say? I need to get rid of this guy. Mordecai. And he's causing too much problem. He's a Jew and he's trying to, you know, get close to the king and, and I need to get rid of him. What does he do? He makes a, uh, you know, a place where they can you know, hang him. Finally, what happened? It came till the end. 
where Mordecai, the king had to say, okay, hang Mordecai. But what happened? All turned. Who is this who's coming against Queen Esther and against the king, Haman? What should be the result for this kind of attitude? Death by hanging. Then what happens? They say, look, the gallows are ready, which Haman put for Mordecai. Hang him in that only. See, when we do things the wrong way, success may be there for some time. But the result will always come out. Right? So the wickedness, the wicked will fall in their own wickedness. Honest people will lead a full, happy life. But if you're in a hurry to get rich, you will go unpunished. Right? So uh, even when you talk about money, wealth, fame, don't be in a hurry to get it. Let it take time. And when you get fame and money in a truthful way, there's so much of peace in that. There's, there's, you're not worried about who's going to come take my money, who's going to become a better pastor than me, who's going to become a better team leader than me. You're not worried about all of that. Why? Because you've done it your way in integrity and truthfulness. Right? Let's go to the next point. Work hard. There is no substitute for diligence. No place for ah, laziness. Proverbs 10 4 He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. You know what a slack means? A slackness means always, you know, being tired, always being weary. Right? Diligence is thoroughness, being meticulous, being careful, being attentive. It involves being. Work, it involves working hard, being industrious, going the extra mile, and putting the extra effort to get the work done. That's what diligence is. Going the extra mile and putting an extra effort to get the things done. Imagine, right? Example, I'm going to give this example. You imagine you're at a conference, APC conference now. You come into the conference and you're, you know, there is two of them who come early and they are in the media team. OK, this is just an example, right? Uh, don't go to the media team and ask why you didn't do this. Just an example. Just an example. Right? The media team, they come early, they're setting up the cameras. And, and then they realize, hey, the hall is full of dust. They're going to start the meeting now in uh, half an hour. Right? And the media team just sitting. It's not my work. Mine is my camera is set, laptop is set, everything's set. I'm ready. I'm sitting. The whole hall is dirty. Maybe it's dusty. The chairs are not arranged. It's not my work. It is other ushering team or the other volunteers. My work is this. But here's the thing you have finished your work, you have set up everything. What is going the extra mile? Go and tell the people, hey, we are using the hall. Can you clean it? It's dirty. Going another extra mile is after they clean it, arranging the chairs. Right? This is I'm just giving an example, right? Being meticulous, being careful, being attentive, working hard. That's being diligent. As long as we can start the conference on time, I will do what I have to do. Going that extra mile. Laziness procrastinates. Okay, tomorrow I will do it. Next week I will do it. And we have these New Year resolutions. From Jan 2020 onwards, that New Year resolution has been coming year after year after year. Now it's 2024. We've only added to the list. <laughs> Nothing has happened. Uh, why? Because laziness procrastinates. Right? Um, there's two things when you talk about laziness, right? It can be physical and mental laziness. You can have a person who's going to the gym every day, but mentally he's lazy. He doesn't want to do anything. He, you can have a person who's going to the gym every day, but he doesn't want to work. Physically, he's strong, fit, but he doesn't want to work. Right? Laziness goes half the way does not complete the job 
but diligence causes a man to possess the full benefits of his work. I remember this happened one long time back. There's this uh, young man. He finished his, uh, I, think, I think it was B.Tech, right? And uh, his mother came to me and he was, she was crying and she was saying, uh, please pray for my son that he should get a job. I said, don't worry, uh, you know, we'll get a job. Nowadays in Bangalore, this is probably about five, six years ago. Uh, you'll get a job. Uh, what has he done? He's done his B.Tech. Oh, he didn't. You know, he's, he's got good computer knowledge and all of that. He'll get any job. Let him join any job. Yeah, all that I know. But this boy is saying he wants to do, he wants to work and he wants to do ministry. So now what he's doing, he's doing 40 days prayer, fasting and prayer. Then after one month, he will try in a few companies. Then again, he's doing 10 days prayer, 12 days prayer. All that is good. But we have commitments at home. Can you talk to him? I said, bring him and come. So I spoke to him. I said, see, 40 days prayer, 20 days prayer, all that is good. God told Adam, you work the garden. You put your hands to the plow. I will bless you. You want to start ministry? Good. You, you need to work because you have commitments? That's true. So you get a job. Whatever the job is, you go and up. No, I applied. Then what happened? Nobody called you for interview. No, I got a call from interview, few interviews, but it was 25 kilometers away. So what? Go. No problem. No, I got up late that morning. You see what happens? That's why I remember telling him, you got to take your life serious. If you do this, then how will you look after ministry? Somebody will call for a house visit, which is 25 kilometers away. What will you do? Will you say, I'll call you on the phone? You can't. So you got to put your hands to the plow. You cannot look at life in a convenient way, saying, you know, it's written here, laziness opts for what is easy, what is convenient, what is comfortable. Laziness keeps you from stretching and putting in that extra effort, from stepping out in what is, uh, stepping out of what is convenient. Laziness attracts poverty. Right now, there's a difference. You can't just, it's not about just keep doing things, right? Whatever we do, we do it with all our heart, strive hard to do it, right? Um, and especially those of us, maybe I know some of us are here called to full time ministry, we cannot afford to be lazy, right? Uh, initially, ministry is small, you start off, but that's where you. You lay the foundation. And I was talking to one of our outreach pastors recently. And while we were talking, he, he's been with APC since 2002. He was our first staff, our first staff of APC. And I was talking to him. And he was telling me, you know, I was reminded of 2003. I said, what happened in 2003? Because I don't know. He said, we used to have whole night prayer. So they would, uh, there were maybe four or five of them. They would meet in a certain place, a right? pastor and a four or five of them. They would meet in a certain place, whole night till 3 a.m. Prayer. I don't know if it's 2003 or 2004, I think one of those years. Night till 3 a.m. Four or five of them praying. And so he was telling me there were times he would be sleeping. And then we will wake up ah, and then start praying. It was very difficult. But now I'm seeing the fruit of what we prayed those years. Nobody knew who's what is APC. Nobody knew we're going to have a Bible college. Nobody knew we're going to have a Christian leaders conference. Nobody knew we're going to have all these things. But in 2003 or 4, we used to get together and pray till 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning. The fruit I'm seeing now. Laziness will only bring poverty. When we work hard, we go the extra mile, we will see the blessings of God. We will see the fruit in our life. Right? Don't just be busy, be productive. Even God looks 
for productivity. Let's read John 15, 1, 2, and verse 8. It's in your notes. I'm the real vine, and my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me and does, that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. My father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit, and in this way you become my disciples. Right. So in John 15, it's very interesting. Jesus says, when you are attached to me, when you as a, you're attached to the vine, you will bear fruit. So that means what? It's not just sufficient to be attached to him, but it's also important to be productive and bear fruit. If we are not being productive, it's of no use. What does Jesus say there? If you're not bearing fruit, it's better to cut and be thrown away. So very important lesson for us. It's not just doing things. We must look at outcome. If I'm looking after ministry, right? If I'm a certain area of ministry, for example, I look after APC East Church, right? And I'm, I'm looking after, the, you know, overseeing the church, overseeing. If I don't see fruit in the church, there's something wrong, no? Yes or no? Maybe I'm, I'm doing too many things, but I don't see productivity, right? I'm doing everything. But no productivity. So I should look for productivity. Am I be able to raise up young leaders? Am I able to minister to families going through difficulties, challenges? Am I being able to reach out to the first time visitors, uh, different areas? And are the volunteer teams growing? Or is it the same volunteer serving the same number of years? No, the volunteer teams need to grow. What about the declaration? Am I able to raise up new leaders to do these things? Then I see fruit. I say, okay, lives are being touched. Lives are being impacted. You know, the most uh, satisfying thing for a preacher or a pastor is when somebody comes and says, I was blessed by what you said through this verse. It satisfies us so much. I said, God, you can use a broken vessel like us to minister to somebody else. Right? It's so satisfying. And you feel, okay, God is using me. You see productivity in your life. Right? And that is very important. Wherever we are, even in the workplace, what we do as work uh, uh, is, is as important to God as what we do in the church. Right? So if you're in the workplace, you're, you're being productive, it is as important. It's not like there are different uh, criteria for those in the corporate sector, different criteria for those in the uh, ministry. No, it's the same. Criteria is the same. Be productive. Right? Even God is looking for that. Uh, your goal is not just to be busy, but to be productive. Delivering results, getting things done, and working to build the organization. You know, Especially when you go up the ladder in a corporate sector, they'll say, the numbers will speak. Show me the numbers. No, uh, you can't go to your manager and say, you know what? I worked so much. Nine, exactly nine o'clock I came in and I worked the whole day. You saw me, I didn't take breaks. I worked the whole day. And now you're asking me about my productivity. Now the manager will say, see, you were there the whole day. But where is the productivity? Show me the numbers. Well, I don't see the result. You're there. But maybe in your mind, you're sitting in some resort. You're here in the office, but where are you? Your res the results, show me. Your numbers will talk. Don't just say, show me in your work. That's what they'll say, managers. Now, is it wrong? It's not wrong. It's true. Only thing they may be harsh when you say when they say it. But that's that's a reality. That's the truth. Show me the numbers. And then we can talk. Right? So getting results, getting things done is is and working towards building the organization is being productive. What you do with your time is up to you. Don't waste it. Yes. 
So powerful, right? Proverbs 28, 19. A hardworking farmer has plenty to eat. People who waste time will always be poor. Learn skills to improve your management. Learn time. Uh, learn how to use time efficiently. Right? Uh, be efficient. Be productive in what you're doing. You know, time that is gone is gone. Cannot come back. Yes or no? We cannot. We cannot go to uh, January twenty first, twenty twenty four. It is gone. The day is gone. Time gone is gone. So it's very important to learn to manage time effectively. And I learned, I, I thank God that I was able to get inputs from leaders and I learned in a better way how to manage. For example, I was looking at different areas of ministry. And there was a time I would, I would say, okay, I will do this, this, this in three days. And I thought, okay, maybe I let me do it this way, right? Where I will take a day. First half, I will, okay, Bible college. Second half, I'll look at maybe life groups. That's on Monday. Tuesday, I will do this. And these are three different ministries. I'll spend so many hours in these three ministries that I'm looking after. Wednesday, okay, Bible college. Okay, then so I I can plan my time. What am I doing? I'm being efficient. Right? Now, not always it goes exactly according to how uh, you know how I planned it. There will be times when there are unnecessary things, I can just get it out of my schedule. I don't, I don't need to do it. Or I can postpone a few things. That's called time management. But the time that is given is given to us. It cannot be given back. It's gone. Everyone heard that saying, time flies. Yes? But you're the pilot. So you have to know how to fly the time. Right? You handle it. Learn how to do it. Right, uh, manage it, and as you keep doing it, we will learn. Right? There are many times, you know, uh, I always tell myself, okay, Sunday is a day I'm going to relax. So after coming from church, I try not to do anything, nothing. But the problem is over here, the thing is key going on running. Why am I wasting time? Can I do something? So what 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 interests me? Right, uh, I may not open my Bible and start doing Bible study and all on Sunday. Just go to the keyboard, play a few songs. Go to pick up the guitar, play a few songs. Learn some songs, listen to some songs. Rather than just sitting and looking into the air, that's of no use. Right? Using time effectively. Do things that you like, even in your free time. Right? Have a passion for excellence. Proverbs 22 and 29. Uh, observe people who are good at their work, skilled workers, and always in demand and and are always in demand and admired. They don't take a back seat. Develop a passion for excellence in your work. Excellence takes two very important things. One is skill and two is hard work. We can have skill and not work hard. We can have hard work. We can do hard work, but with no skill, nothing's going to work out. I'm just working hard, nothing's no outcome. I develop a, pa a, a, a passion for excellence. This don't settle for mediocrity. You know, when you start off in a company or an organization, you're learning. Give yourself time. Okay, two years from now, this is how I want my work to be. It should be this good. Right? Now, for example, when you look at um, you know, many times we've got this feedback, you know, the worship is so uh, the production, the worship is so excellent, right? It's so timeless, seamless service. It wasn't always like that, right? But the vision was there. One day we're getting there, right? And we work towards it, have that passion, a, a, a zeal. Okay, I need to get better in what I'm doing, right? Next one, never stop learning. Never stop learning. Uh, Proverbs 1 5, a wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. If you stop learning, then that's the time you will stop growing. As leaders, as people, wherever we are, whoever we are, never stop learning. Look for opportunities to learn. 
Look for ways you can grow your knowledge, your skills, acquire new skills, listen to people, read. You know, uh, even even talking to people, you know, will help you to learn. You know, for example, I spoke to this pastor. He said this is what he did, and it just helped me to learn. You know, never despise small beginnings, right? Uh, uh, be available for training. Increase your now with online. We have so much that is available. You know, we have documentaries. We have commentaries. We have. I mean, look at uh, AI has made life even more easier. Yes or no? Right. It's just everything is available online. There's a vast, vast field available. And we can learn. We can acquire so much of knowledge just by sitting at home, switching on your laptop, going to the right websites. The problem is we go to the wrong websites. Choose the right things to learn. Use the resources that God has given us. Never, never stop learning. Watch others, observe, learn from what they're doing, learn from the successes of others, and learn from their failures. That's the best part of you know, talking to others. You know, we learn from their failures. Okay, this is what they did wrong. And so this was the consequences. So it's better I don't do it. Very simple. Right? Never stop learning. Keep growing. Uh, have the desire to be genuine to learn. Welcome feedback. Right? If, if you want to learn, you should also welcome feedback. Okay. He's saying, "Don't do this." Okay. Let me let me take that feedback. Or he says, "You know, uh, when you're when you're when you're talking, you talk this way. Right? Talk in this manner. Talk a little bit slow. Stand straight. Simple things, but it's going to help you. Yes or no? Right?" Uh, have eye contact when you're speaking to people. Very simple things, but you're learning, right? Um, finally, the last point is stay calm, stay focused, even when the unexpected happens. Proverbs three twenty five and twenty six. Go ahead. Anyone can read. No need to panic over. Alarms or surprises or predictions that doomsday doomsdays just around the corner because God will be right there with you. He will keep you safe and sound. Yes. So there will be the unexpected. There will be storms. There will be the uh, you know bad news coming every now and then, right? Any time from anywhere, these bad news can come in these situations. Remember that God is with us, right? Just I always what I do in all these situations where things don't go as expected. All I say is, God, I'm in the boat, and you're you're in that boat as well. The storm is coming, but you are with me in that storm. So I know you will take me through. If the boat is going to sink, you will make me walk on water, God. Very simple. Actually, hold on to God, and uh, you must remember that God is with us at that moment, and He will see us through. Uh, stay calm. It's very easy to panic, right? Uh, now, all of us have different temperaments, right? Some of us can stay calm. Some of them, some of us may panic very easily. Uh, that's when we need to tell ourselves, "Okay, God, I know You're with me. Uh, help me to stay calm. Help me to uh, direct my mind, my thoughts in the right way." And when the unexpected happens, don't just fall down and say, oh, my life is done. No, right? God is with us in that storm. He will see us through, right? All right, so we'll stop. We uh, completed uh, chapter 3 as well. Uh, next class, we'll get into section 2 on uh, things to do in the workplace, right? All right, thank you so much. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless.